keep telling myself that no matter how long winter is, spring is just around the corner. And the sooner I get started on boat prep, the sooner I get in the water. That's really all the motivation it takes to get going. So I got to get rid of this tarp. Getting ready for launch doesn't begin with uncovering, but my parents wanted to help, so it seemed like a pretty good place to start. You can see the tarps blowing around a bunch, so the extra hands were really helpful. My dad has this theory he calls uh, stay in constant motion, which I never really understood, but today I found very much helpful. It looks like I sped the video up here, but he actually does move this fast. Tim Clements designed this boat cover that my mom calls the Conestoga Wagon. And every fall when I go to put it back on the boat, I have the hardest time figuring out which order all the poles go in. I end up duct taping a lot of things together. So my mom went around and had the great idea of actually labeling every piece. Oop, hope that didn't hit the boat next to me. Some people have their boats shrink wrapped, but this particular boat yard won't let you shrink wrap them yourself because they fear you're using the torch, so they require you to have them do it and they charge quite a bit. So you'll see most boats in this boat yard actually have tarps or custom boat covers. In order to minimize the number of holes I have to cut in the tarps, I take the spreaders all apart except for the two primary ones and I zip tie them together. So here I am cutting them apart. I mark the approximate stopping position for the turnbuckles with a piece of tape so I know just about how tight to make them. Some people use fancy tensioning equipment, but I just do it by hand and by feel. I use a lot of Simple Green and Scotch Bright pads to clean everything up. There's always some rust dripping and dirt buildup from the boat sitting all winter. I don't actually move this fast. I did speed this video up. This is the bootstripe. It's a layer of paint where the ablative of paint ends. Every year I get a fair bit of growth coming up about the first two millimeters. So I think next year I'm going to raise up the anti-fouling paint by maybe four millimeters. At this point, they haven't turned the water on yet in the yard, so I'm actually using some snow as water to wash off the scrapings. It is pretty much amazing how much growth can happen on just two millimeters of unpainted surface. I never get the anti-fouling that far up the through hulls. I uh, always get a little bit of growth in there. I really got to make sure I scrape these out when I do my bottom scrubbing during the year. There are two grounding plates on the boat. One of them is dedicated to the single sideband radio and the other one is for all of the rest of the electronics. I like to make sure they are wire brush clean to a shiny finish. <laughs> make sure you get as much of that copper paint on your hands. I try to chip away any part of the paint that was going to chip in its, on its own. Got to make sure you replace the zincs, which are sacrificial metals. I have one on my propeller shaft. The zinc is a highly active metal which corrodes instead of letting the other metal on the boat corrode, protecting everything else. And then you gotta blast off all the barnacles. I just used a wire brush drill bit for this part. It's easier than an angle grinder or sandpaper. Probably more work than it's worth, but I bring the propeller back to a shine every year before I put it in the water. I've been told by someone that if you coat it in magic marker, it'll prevent it from ever getting tarnished, but I don't know if I believe that. I should probably try it. Good as new. This Dodger is awesome. It keeps the rain out and has great visibility with uh, clear glass all across the front. A lot of people ask where it came from. Um, it was made at Back Channel Canvas on Badger's Island in Kittery, Maine. The first time I put it on, I had it completely backwards. So confusing. I'm 
always impressed with how easily these two little straps seem to lift up a 22,000 pound boat. The guy driving the travel lift, Kevin, he passed away this year. He'd been the operator for 11 years, and it made me comfortable to know how experienced he was at driving boats across land. You can't see the water from where the boat is stored, which I think is just wrong. This is the best moment right here. The boat's in the water, all the prep work is done. Now all I gotta do is get the sails up and have some fun. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.